Hello people. Welcome to the community of the Growth Mindset podcast. Guys, if you are a first time listener, don't forget to subscribe on whichever platform you're listening from so that you don't miss on more interesting episodes coming up in following weeks. And for our daily listeners, here we are again with a new episode where we will interview another interesting personality from a unique industry and understand how they were able to accomplish this great level of success. Remember, this is a podcast where we learn easy, practical methods and tips that we can implement in our daily lives from the very best and the most successful people known today. Because as we all know, success leaves clues. And we the people having the growth mindset will use these clues to create a better, more fulfilling and a successful life. So, let the growth begin. And and how can somebody identify the the word that you just mentioned disc right is this like a method where you identify personalities is that like a test yes. yeah oh, mm-hmm. interesting all right now yeah. I want to talk about uh, according to you right what is the best approach uh, whenever you're going ahead and you know uh, selling your product or service like let's say if somebody uh, is cold calling or do you think uh, emails or it should be a mix of both emails as well as uh you know uh cold call so what do you think should be the right approach when you're re- reaching out a person for the first time well i think the best way to do is referrals mm-hmm. right that's always the best and i think it's easy you should be asking for referrals earlier in the process not when they're happy customers and if you said no i don't need that i'd say i really appreciate your honesty let me ask you a question before i hang up A person in your position probably knows at least one or two other people that may need what I do. Could you share those with me? So you just said no to me, but I'm still going to ask you for a referral. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Now, do you have LinkedIn? Yeah. Or something? Okay. So another way to do is to go to every happy customer that you have, go into into their contacts and see who they're connected with that may be a prospect of yours. And then you would call, right? If you were to call me, you would say, hey, Dave, I noticed that you have Bill White and Mary Jones in in your connections. Would you be nice enough to introduce me to those? Now we do those all the time. It's our number one way to get net new conversations. And so every salesperson, you should have a quota of how many of those you're going to do every single week, not when I get to it. That's never acceptable. So that would be one. But I think cold calls still work. And we have a book on how to prospect through email and how to, pro- I wrote a book with LinkedIn. So how to use LinkedIn. And I'm happy to, you know, give those to your listeners. Yep. I'm happy to download them, happy to do it. But I think social selling is great. Referrals are great. Um, past clients. Hey, listen, if you've had clients and they've moved to a different company, why aren't we following them? Why, why, why don't we follow them? Sure. Um, and t- right now with the pandemic here in the U.S., we're going after past clients that have left us who I would have typically ignored. They're actually our number one new client. Why? They know who we are. Yeah. You know, we know the issues. For some reason, we just we went, we went apart. Yep. And so it was been easy for us. So, but I do think that if you have a combination of all of them, that's the best. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and I think you have to pick things that are fit your personality. So, you know, I want to cut to the chase. I'm I'm a high D. So going to a networking meeting and talking to people about stuff that uh, (laughs) uh, chances are, you know, I'm going to get lost on that, you know, by, on purpose and tell her what I just didn't, I just didn't make it, you know, because it's not high, high on my want to do list. So I'll do all the other stuff. So you got to pick and choose. Makes sense. And what is your uh, suggestion for people who are on field sales? Now, since this is out of the box, now we can't do this, but once let's say this pandemic settles down and we have a vaccine and a cure and things go back to normal, then what do you think uh, field sales people should do? whenever they're going for a presentation or a meeting so that they could close those deals. Because even the body language has, you know, uh, an impact on how, as to how you're talking to a customer, uh, the tone of your voice, how you're dressed, how you're groomed, some tips that you think would really help 
Okay, so do you remember that term I used upfront contract? Yeah. Where you're kind of going over the agenda and outcome? Yep. The best way to close somebody is to tell them that at the end of the meeting, you should be in a position in order to make, you should be in a position to make a decision. So why mm -hmm. don't we ask each other enough questions in order for you to feel comfortable? Would that be fair? And I've actually just told you, and you've agreed that we're going to make a decision at the end. That is the best right. because here's why. If I try to close you 45 minutes into the one hour meeting, you by default must say, I need to think it over. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's one. That's the best technique. Here's another one. When I'm presenting, let's say you had three issues. I'm not going to wait until the end to say, so what do you think? <laughs> no. So when, I, when you gave me problem one and I present my solution to problem one, before I go to number two, I say, are you 100% satisfied on how we're going to solve that issue? And if you mm -hmm. say no, I'm stopping right here and I'm saying, well, I, I appreciate your honesty. What, where, was the, where did you feel uncomfortable? Yeah. And I'm going to solve that right now, right? There's no reason to move on if you're uncomfortable with number one. Mm -hmm. No reason. Yep. And the other thing that I, a little slight technique is I would say, I know we've got these three issues that you've shared with me, and, and I'm very happy to present to that today. Which one would you like to see me talk about first? Mm -hmm. I ask you the order. Yeah. And you know what? It's never the first one. It's never the first <laughs> one. So you were about to describe and spend a lot of time on something that really wasn't that important to them. But they mm -hmm. threw it on the table during our sales call first. It, the, tr the trust wasn't there yet. The real meat tends to be a little later in the conversation. So you've moved that down the stack. And by the time you get there, you know, why not start strong? Yep. So those three things are really what I like to do. So if I get a yes, 100%, yes, 100%, I mean, it's hard to say no, right? So, um, so I think the more you do up front, the easier it is to close. And best thing is, if you do those things, the buyer closes themselves. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because I would say at the end, you know, I think we're at that spot where we've had enough dialogue where you should be in a, in a position that you should either say, hey, I think there's a good fit here, right? Dave, you really solved my issues or no, and, and I'm glad we spent the time, but there's just, there's just not any synergy here. We're going to go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. where, where are you? Where are you? And what if and the... Yeah. And what if the, cust uh, the customer says, you know, maybe this is not the right fit for me? What do you say then? How do you battle that? Well, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Right. Let me ask you a question because it sounds like it may be over. Fair. Mm -hmm. I, I always say it may be over first because that lowers the defenses, right? Say, so I, I appreciate that. We're not for everybody. Maybe over. Can I ask you a question though before we end? Where, where are you uncomfortable? And the only reason I'm asking is because if it's something that I know I could fix, but it was the way I described it or I just went over it too quickly, that would be a shame. And it may not be, but why don't we just spend five minutes? And if you could share that with me, I'd be the first to say, if it's not, you're absolutely correct. Good decision. We would not be a fit. Would that mm -hmm. be okay? And here we go. Makes sense. Perfect. See, every time you throw me a problem, did you notice? I then take it and make it your issue. Yeah, <laughs> correct. <laughs> because here's the thing, and I'm going to use an analogy, and I, and I apologize. Do you have a dog? Do you have a dog? No, I don't have a dog. Okay, so I have a dog. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed when you throw the tennis ball, the dog runs after the tennis ball? Yeah. It's like it's an endless game, right? But that's what prospects do to us as salespeople. They say, hey, I'd like a proposal. <whistles> we, <laughs> we get it. Got it. Hey, I like a reference. But why are we doing all those things? You don't really know. So I just make it your issue. So I say, I throw the ball and I say, well, if you want to go run after it, let's go. Let's, we can go together, but I'm not running after it on my own because it, it proves out to be nothing. Because, hey, listen, here's the number one rule as an entrepreneur selling. You can't lose anything you never had. So just say what you know has to be said it's a lot easier and they'll respect you for it and you'll be acting differently. So they'll treat you differently because at the, 
let me ask you this. If I said to a salesperson on a, on a call, what are the top three reasons I should buy from you? Well, what do you think a, a traditional salesperson would say? Just throw some things out. I think uh, they're going to talk about the features, saying, you know, this is what our features are. Uh, then I think, products. Yeah, right? yeah. Big products. Yeah. And then I think you'll and then I think he would talk about the pricing, saying, you know, this is the this awesome is our pricing. pricing. Yeah, mm -hmm. amazing good pricing. Good service. Yeah. Good reputation. Correct. Right? Yeah. Been doing it a long, long time. Good references. Yes. All those things. Yeah. All right. So now fast forward. We went to lunch. Now there's a new salesperson sitting in front of me. It's in the afternoon. It's about four o'clock. And I say, hey, what are the top reasons three reasons I should buy from you? What do you think they say? The same things. True. They're going to say awesome product, awesome pricing, awesome service, awesome references. You all sound alike. So stop. Stop. You know, so I think like, for instance, if somebody says, hey, tell me about your company. You shouldn't do a data dump about we've been in business for 53 years. We have won all these awards. My mother is so proud. <laughs> Forget all that. <laughs> we should say, we should say, give them what I call a pain based 30 second commercial. Hmm. Hey, Dave, tell me a little bit about Sandler. We haven't worked together in the past. Hey, I'd be happy to. Um, you know, when I work with CEOs like yourself, I find that sometimes they're frustrated by the fact that as they look at their sales funnel, they honestly don't know when things are closing and they're frustrated that they, they listen to their salespeople and month after month, they say, this is the month boss. Don't worry. This is the month boss. Don't worry. But it's never the month or they're really concerned that in order to get a deal, they find themselves discounting very heavily in order to get the deal. Right. And I think the last thing that sometimes they're, they're always just frustrated by is that their people aren't doing enough activity to get net new business. So the stuff that's in the funnel, they have to do everything possible to keep it there, even if it's bad business. When the real thing is, they should be making more cold calls to get more things in the funnel. But every business is different. So I, any of those sound, you know, like relevant to you? And I'd just be quiet. Yeah. So the 30 second commercial is you take the, here's, Here's who I am. Here's the problems that I solve, yeah. right? The people that I work with. So you take the top three frustrations that you know a prospect would say on a call that you would say as a salesperson, yes, 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 yes. It's a prospect for me. So I know, you know, discounting, closing rates. That's me for sales training, right? You put your top three frustrations in and it could change based on industry, based on persona. Yeah. And then I say, these are the types of things that I see and solve. Now, I said frustrated by, concerned with, upset with. Those are, those are trigger words, right? Yep. And that's yep. how I start. So if you do a fishing analogy, I put the, the top three lures in the pond, and I said, well, if you're a prospect of mine, chances are you're going to bite on one of those, right? True. And that's how I start the call. I don't start with, hey, let me tell you about me because I'm so wonderful. Nope. I say, here are the three things that I find. Do you have any of those? Yeah. Nope. Or yes. Correct. It's an awesome technique, by the way. That is. I'm, I'm definitely going to, you know, implement those <laughs> in my safe strategies now. <laughs> but if you'd like, I'm happy to send a tool to you and your listeners if, it, if they would like a pre-call planner, because we talked mm -hmm. about pre-call planning, mm -hmm. and how to create a 30-second commercial, how to create a good elevator pitch. Happy to do it. Please, that'd be, that'd be great. You know, my listeners, I'm sure would be, would be very happy. And personally, I would love to read that as well. I've just downloaded your book as well uh, on Audible. Okay, great. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Uh, I want to go back to another question. Now, uh, as you know, right, I, one thing that I've realized uh, with the conversation we're having is a uh, Sandler training is focusing more on qualifying a prospect rather than directly closing it. All right. This is what I've observed so far. Now, understanding that, you know, you're spending more time in qualification and not directly closing, how do you understand what are the right questions you should ask during the qualification process and understand what is wrong? Okay, so in the qualification process, let's define what that is. For mm -hmm. me, it's pain or need, budget, and mm -hmm. decision. Mm -hmm. So how do you do the questions? Well, the first one is I just gave you, I start every call with, these are the types of problems that True. we see and solve. 
So I throw that out. Mm -hmm. And now you say, well, we actually have a problem. Let's just say, yes, we're getting poor service with our existing supplier. Mm -hmm. The first thing is, well, tell me more about that. What would that look like? Instead of saying, service, we're so great at service. We can solve the service problem. If I could solve service, would you become a customer of mine right now? Oh, whoa, True. whoa, back, back down, back down. So I said, tell me a little more about that. So your question should be, how do I uncut? What would a doctor ask you? Tell me more about it, right? I mean, give me an example. I love that question. Give me an yeah. example of when that's happened. How long has it been a problem? What have you done to try to fix it? Okay. Is it really a big issue? Does it cost you any money? That's yep. an impact, right? Yep. Uh, I want to ask, hey, have you done anything to fix it? I want to ask, does anyone else in the company really care about this or is it only you? Because that tells me how fast you're going to move, right? Sure. Um, I'm going to be asking questions on budget. Hey, I know we talked about these three issues. Did you put, have you put a budget set aside for this to solve this issue? That's mm -hmm. how I ask it every single time. Mm -hmm. But they could say yes, no, or hey, I'm not going to tell you, right? Yep. Uh, my decision questions are, when you make when you when you make decisions like this, like for instance, I just saw you put in a new computer system. How did you go about making that decision? Now he's gonna, they're gonna tell me how they made an unrelated decision. Chances are they're gonna do the same darn thing right here, right? Sure. So, I want to ask you, you know, who besides yourself is going to be involved in the ultimate decision here? Mm -hmm. So I ask. I always include you, even if you're not. I'm going to include you. And then I always ask things like, you know, time is, we're, we're all have got so much things to do in today's world. Can I ask you a question? Is this like in one of the top four or five things that you want to solve this quarter? Because if it's not, let's just push it. We'll, we'll talk next quarter. So I actually gauge how interested you are mm -hmm. because that's ah, not that important. I don't want to waste a lot of time because mm -hmm. guess what? When it, times, when it comes for you to spend money, you're going to say, ah, it's not that important. Let's just get it on the table now. Yep. So, that's there. But I also think if you thought about your sales gate in your whatever we're selling, think about what are the four or five things that I would love to know. Love to know. I may never get it. But I'd love to know it. Those are the questions that you should start memorizing mm -hmm. and create for yourself. Create a playbook for yourself. Mm -hmm. And every time you have a genius attack, you ever have those on a call like, wow, I don't know where that came from, but woo, I'm a stud. Right, that was awesome. Jot it down. <laughs> Write it down. Yeah. That's gonna be, remember it, and just then you can continue to refine it. So those are the types of questions mm -hmm. that uh, that you should be asking. All right, makes sense. Uh, now I want to ask you, what are some good books that salespeople can read, right, which can help them? Uh, you know, now obviously what I'm asking is uh, going to be three or four different places. Now there are books like, that you can read on psychology to understand human behavior, how people buy. Right. Uh, but I want to ask you in general, if you had to suggest, let's say one or two books based on how they can close better, become a better salesman, right? What those books are going to be. Okay. So I am of course biased. We have 27 books. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I think David Sandler's book. Uh, you can't teach a kid how to ride a bike at a seminar, the Sandler Selling Steps, because he talks about it in a social situation and mm -hmm. then brings it to sales. By far, was always my best book. Um, I think that the book on prospecting mm -hmm. is awesome. The questioning skills, Sandler questioning, it's a whole book on questions. And they mm -hmm. break down, here are all the questions that you want to ask in each stage of your sales cycle. It is awesome. Yeah. Um, I like The Power of Persuasion by Robert mm -hmm. Galdini. Hmm. which helps you identify, right, the strategies that people use to make decisions. It's an awesome book, awesome. all based on science. Uh -huh. I like Take Flight, Take Flight, okay. and that's a book on disc where you hmm. can very quickly figure out who's who because they use some – they use birds actually, right, just to describe it at a very high level for the first time that you've done it. So, for instance um, – the dominance are eagles. It's, everything's big picture. Don't bog me down on details, right? Mm -hmm. Very protective. <laughs> Go down. Don't have a lot of time for socializing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a loner. And then you've got the other group, which is influencers. They're, they're, those are like parrots. I mean, they are yapping all the time. They're <laughs> just a thousand of them together. You never see eagles together. You know, yeah. These parrots are just yapping, 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 yapping. And then you've got the people that are high estes, and those are the doves. 
Hey, can't we just get all along here? Can't we just? Hey, come <laughs> on, come on. Let's just come on now. Why are? Why is this? Why? Are, come on now. Let's just all be. Let's be on the same page here. Why are we changing? This tree is good. Why are we changing? The last one are owls. Hi, mm. anal, right? Facts, mm. figures, boom, boom, mm. boom. So it kind of describes it, and you can get it like this. The minute you start using these animal characters, people <laughs> like, oh, that's an owl right there. You yeah. know, I would like to hear exactly the 17 step process that you will use if, in fact, we decide to become customers. Really? 17 steps? Okay, absolutely, <laughs> sir. That's a high, that's a, that would be an owl, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, so it's sure. kind of interesting. Awesome. So since we are coming to uh, the end of the interview, are there something that I want to ask you? Two questions, sure. right? Uh, the first question being, is there anything that you would like to say uh, to all the listeners with regards to sales? Anything that I've missed that you'd like to bring to their attention? Well, as entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. um, you, could be, you're, you could be a great trades person, good at what you're good at engineer, good software developer, whatever the case is, that does not mean that people want it. So your product must be second. Your sales skills must be first. You know in your heart of hearts that you're being outsold by inferior products and services because it has nothing to do with that. So that would be one. I think we did talk about the behavioralist. Yep. I would also say um, put your ego away. Do not let your ego get involved in sales. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're the CEO. I get it. I understand. Yes, you're an entrepreneur and you're, you should demand respect. You should, but don't get your needs met on a call. Don't try to be smart. Don't try to outwit your buyer. I want my mm -hmm. buyer to feel mm -hmm. smart. I want to feel okay by asking questions versus my ego saying, don't ask that question. You should know that. Don't ask that question. I want you to ask those questions. Yeah. So I think if you just take your ego off, if you do a lot of pre, I think you should, if you, I think everyone should be doing pre-call planners. You should take 25% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of your call time up front preparing beforehand. You'll be super effective if you did that, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that I would stress. Uh, and I also, you've heard me say a couple times, which we call negative reversing, selling, which is I'm not pushing. I think when you push, people resist. Yep. You've heard me say, and, and it's okay if it's not. Hey, I'm not sure if this makes sense. So I'm not telling you what to think. I'm setting it and saying, how do you feel about that? And yeah. if you like it, boom. See, I'm not boxing myself in for hoping that you're going to say yes or no. I'm just posing it. And then I have all these options based on what you've said, right? Yeah. Because I think salespeople ask questions expecting the buyer to say absolutely. And when they don't give that right answer, <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> But, and I think the last thing I would say is practice, 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 and then throw it all out the window and just be yourself when on the sales call. Listen, just be yourself because people sense when you're uncomfortable yeah. and you don't want that. So just be yourself. Even if you do nothing that you practiced, it's okay. <laughs> eventually it will get you. You know, sure. you'll say something eventually, but that's what I would say. Okay. And this is one last question that I all ask almost all the guests on my podcast right now uh, you've had a quite an amazing career you are the CEO of one of the biggest companies when it comes to sales training right now I what I wanted you to do I wanted to imagine that you know 20 30 years down the lane you know uh, maybe you're retired and you're sitting at home with your kids and it's the time when you are gonna pass on right that the end days are coming and uh, you could give two advices to your kids to all the five children that you have, only two advices. It could be anything. It could be professional. It could be personal. But something that would help them lead a better life. What those two advices are gonna be? I would say, um, if you decided to be a workaholic, if you feel like you have to be one, do it at night when your kids are sleeping, not when they're awake. I think that would be my first. Which I did. I mean, I took that advice, and I, and I think it's a good piece of advice. Um, the second thing is that you should always be hungry. Never be complacent. You know, when you think you've crafted, you know, you've at the top of your career, people spend 25 years getting to where they want to be, 
then they protect it and they spend the next five years decimating it because they're not doing any of the things that it took them to get there. They're not taking that risk. They're not yeah. doing it, you know, that so they just stop. So never stop. Never stop is what I would tell them. Perfect. I personally love the first part that you just mentioned. You know, if you're a workaholic, do it at night. I mean, like, I, I love that advice. This is the first time I've heard something like that. So, you know, you know, I have to said five kids, I put my kids to bed at nine and I would work because I couldn't get my job done in time. So I thought, but I would work until 1 a.m. And my kids never knew it, you know, so I still got to, you have different roles, right? Yeah. CEO, salesperson, product manager, spouse, parent. Yeah. Well, you better compartmentalize those mm -hmm. or you're going to miss out on what's life. No one says, hey, I wish I spent more time in the office. That's just yep. not how it works. <laughs> Definitely. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Dave, for your precious time, you know, on the podcast. It was lovely interacting with you. I've personally learned a lot. Uh, and definitely I'm going to, I know, read and your suggestions that you give. I'm going to implement those in my sales strategies Good. to become a better salesman. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity to speak to your listeners. Awesome.